two days to July, a month in which we celebrate Ghana's Republic Day. This month reminds us of the transformative leadership of Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder of our nation. Kwame Nkrumah inspired us to dream. Kwame Nkrumah inspired us to believe. Kwame Nkrumah inspired us to dare. Kwame Nkrumah inspired us to achieve greatness. However, since Nkrumah and President Hilat Lehman, Ghana has endured a leadership that has often lacked vision and care for the people of Ghana. Today, more than ever, Ghana needs leadership like that of Kwame Nkrumah. This is why I offer myself for service to the Ghanaian people. My vision is to create a Ghana where everyone, including the youth and women, can achieve their full potential. I aim to provide decent opportunities, both in private and public sectors, and ensure that Ghanaians do not feel the need to travel abroad to seek opportunities. At least, at least, a Ghana first degree should be preferred to a Dutch passport. As we look forward, towards Ghana at hand, and the African Union agenda of 2063, we need a new direction, a new direction offering clear hope and a future for our country and our continent. We need a new leader, a new leader that comes with honesty, incorruptibility, and committed to the future of our youth. And we need a new Ghana, a Ghana that is professionally managed and law-abiding and inclusive. Many first-time voters are disillusioned with the current leadership which has failed to meet their expectations. The Bernard Ambataila Mona leadership offers a new and necessary direction for our country. My commitment to honesty, discipline, and excellence has shaped my political and personal life. My experience in various leadership rules has prepared me to lead Ghana effectively. As the national youth organizer of the PNC, I established networks to build pipeline of activists and leaders. As general secretary, I run an effective party secretariat that helps secure members of parliament for our party. Serving as secretary to the Kwame Nkrumah Centenary Planning Committee, I contributed to organizing events that highlighted Ghana's legacy and attracted the African diaspora. As the co-convener of Arise Ghana Movement, I led public courses that pressured government to handle the economy more responsibly. As coordinator of the Pan-African Federalist Movement, I worked without respite with other comrades for greater continental integration. I ran a farm in my community, Santana. This and my football club has created jobs and opportunities for youth in the country. <laughs> Countrymen and women, Ghana is a sad case. Ghana is currently facing a multitude of challenges. One, high levels of unemployment, making many youth predisposed to crime. This situation was not when Kwame Nkrumah was president. Indeed, the United Nations had predicted that by the near year 1970, Ghana would be employing people from China, from the United States, and other parts of the world because of the grand agenda Kwame Nkrumah was pursuing. Today, majority of Ghanaian youth cannot find jobs. This is a sad reminder of where we have started from. Inflation 
that the consistent increase in prices on a daily basis has become the lot of the Ghanaian people. This is challenged by an exchange rate crisis further aggravating the inflation situation and eroding capital of traders, especially those who are engaged in importing. Corruption has virtually become the second national anthem of our nation under President Akufuado. Opportunities linked to how much you can pay or who you know has become the lot of the Ghanaian people. If you know no one, you cannot get recruitment into the police service. If you know no one, you cannot get placement as a nursing institution. If you know no one, you cannot be employed as a teacher. And if you know no one, your daily survival becomes a problem. There is also rapidly declining quality of public goods and services, especially when you go to our various hospitals, our educational sector, our water, and other services. There is also lack of money that has become a major hell for the many people of our country. Above all, the double track system of our education has rendered our students not even understand where they are going. They are unable to maintain a certain standard of education. Ladies and gentlemen, gross mismanagement of the economy and the abuse of the delivery of public goods and services. Abuse of public office manifested in one town looting favoritism and nepotism, politicization of every facet of our Ghanaian economy, pulling down the boundaries between party and the state. This is why we need a new Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> beloved countrymen and women, the vision of a new Ghana is anchored on a nine-point agenda. One, a food secure and agro prosperous nation. Two, a well skilled, values driven, professional and trained manpower. Three, a gold economy as opposed to a dollarized economy. Four, a safe and a secure government and a secure governing country based on the rule of law and ready to make changes to accommodate our emerging needs. A responsible, respected, and friendly nation that champions the attainment of the vision of our forebears of Africa's liberation in all its forms. A healthy society whose citizens receive quality health care, is socially inclusive, a prudently managed economy where the revenues needed for our development are equitably allocated. Well-connected country where movement of our people Goods, technology, communication are responsive to the current and future needs. We live in a country where it becomes difficult to transverse from one part to the other.